Let us be the first to say good morning and welcome to Garden America. It is Saturday morning. If you're listening to this uh, broadcast in terms of being pre-recorded, it could be any time of the day or night. But we are live right now, Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio, pre-recorded. Welcome to Garden America. We are back and ready to go. Trust you had a good week. We've got a good show lined up today. I didn't say great yet. It's got to turn into a great show. We think it's a good show. It's a little different. You probably notice all the... Uh, the plants and real uh, plants, real plants in the studio, the foliage, and actually most of this is from John's backyard. Yeah, John, John took it to the extreme. He was worried we wouldn't have enough to talk about. Like we ever don't have enough to talk about on this show. Well, yeah, we mentioned that each of us was going to bring in a plant. Yeah, yeah I brought Ty- one plant. Tiger Ty- brought Tiger one. Tiger said, "Bring in your favorite plant." <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> and John, John brought in ten plants. You know what's funny though? If you were to ask John to bring in his favorite child, he would only bring in one. You know, there is one, probably. You know. And I'd have to think about that, too. <laughs> right? <laughs> but anyway, welcome to the show. No guest today. If you if you got our newsletter, then you, you know that. If you got our newsletter, you know a lot of things that others don't know because they don't get the newsletter. Yeah, the newsletter is a great wealth of information. I like the quote of the week on today's yes. newsletter. And it's kind of more recent because uh, Monty Don, if I remember correctly, right? Right, right. Yeah. I, I like Monty Don, and I follow him on social media and his right. w- things, and I, I, I like his perspective on gardening. In, in, it kind of just is in line with my perspective on gardening, so maybe that's why I like it as well. Sure. But he's, he's a good guy. I like and, the, and again, if you get the newsletter, the then you get the quote of the week. You should probably let our listeners know who Monty Don is. Um, he is a English... Garden. garden personality right right i mean that's right. what you would describe him but i mean he's he's even more that designer you know horticulturalist like he's very involved um on the european side of horticulture because he's involved with like you know plant development and gardening so, so and he design. runs in different circles than we do yeah much higher circles <laughs> hey john made it today john spent a lot of time in the green room this morning yeah uh, getting prepped. i was just thinking that since you mentioned the quote maybe we should do that now I think that's a good idea because why, Get it why, out of the why way. talk about it, then go on to something else, then return to it. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so Monty Don said, when you plant something, you invest in a beautiful future amidst a stressful, chaotic, and at times downright appalling world. So true. That is so, so true. true. I mean, you know, this weekend, today, when I get home, I brought plants home from the nursery to do the entrance of our house and kind of like a fall display. And I know when I'm done, I'm going to be happy with well, it. Who did, did you know somebody to get those plants? Yeah. How does, how does that work? I, I, grease, grease some wheels. Grease some wheels. And you have Got connections, things. don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Got a plant guy. I should, you know, I should rent <laughs> plants from you. Right. You know, like once a month, bring in new plants, take them away. That change the look. Million dollar idea. Look at that. It's, you know how they do like you... Netflix where they used to like send in a DVD and you bring another one back and like. Women do that, and men do it with What's clothing. What's wrong with... We should send plants to people, and then, then when they're done with it, they send us back And here's plant. another idea, though. Send them seasonal plants. Yeah. When the seasons change, you take them away. Well, people do that with living Christmas trees. Yeah, but this, well, this is a whole other thing, though. This, yeah. is, this is plants. This is, this is something that you could continually change the look of your landscape. Maybe not all of it, but a little bit of it. Hmm. I like I like the next... It's an idea that would never fly. <laughs> You know, you know, John hates John, it when we come up yeah. with, with ideas that he didn't <laughs> yeah. think of. Jeez. I was just looking at the newsletter because when I do it, I do it on the computer, right? And so you but don't always see it. I don't always see email. it on the phone, but I, I'm flipping on the phone. <laughs> oh, boy, there's a – look at that. That's, that's in your face. Yeah, right? I know. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. People, people got to see our big faces on the newsletter yeah. this week. But I don't know why, like – Tigers is by far the biggest. <laughs> then you're next, and then I just got this little picture. Well, you know what? You are a, a... <laughs> have a what smaller are you head say? than what are you, you do. Say? I know that. He's a he's a, he's a gentle little fellow. He's a gentle John. little fellow. He's a gentle little gardener. Is what John is. Oh. So yeah, a lot of people tuned in. Uh, Kim from uh, Tucson. Carla says good morning. Rochelle, Dana, they're all here. Yeah. And a lot more on the way here on Garden America. So yes, we're going to be talking about these plants that you see. Obviously, if you're uh, tuned in on BizTalk Radio, you don't get the visual, but we invite you to uh, watch our show live on Facebook every Saturday, 11 o'clock on the East Coast, 11 o'clock in the morning, obviously, 8 o'clock on the West Coast. You can watch us live and see what we're talking about, those on BizTalk Radio. I do have a correction for the newsletter because in my haste to get it out, I used the pictures 
from last week's um, article. Oh. Because I wrote an article on sweet peas for for this week. Yes. And it shows Sharon Asakawa is being the author writing the root of the problem, which was an article about tree roots from the previous week. So it's actually myself that wrote the article, and it's about sweet peas. So if you think you already saw that, skip it, and you can find out all about sweet peas down below. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, John. Hey, ne- next to- week's newsletter will have a redaction. And it's easy to get the newsletter, too. I went on GardenAmerica.com this morning to our website. Mm-hmm. A lot of things at the top you can click, and one of them was newsletter. It said newsletter. A Take- lot of things at the you-, top you can click can a lot of things <laughs> on our website, GardenAmerica.com. <laughs> and hey, have our- you figured out why every time that you do that it says you're already signed up? Because I'm already signed up. Exactly. Um, oh, and last week our show was posted the day of on YouTube. Ooh. When I got home last week, our show, this show right here, was already on our YouTube channel. Wow. Garden America Radio. So go to YouTube. Watch us. Go to Garden Tube. A lot of good information there. Listen to us. Watch us. Have fun with us. Hey, yeah. Carla says the studio looks beautiful. It does. It, you know what? It does when I'm looking at this wide shot right here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank, and, you. Thank you, Carla. And Kim uh, from the Tucson Garden Club gives beautiful. us a shout-out. Hey, a big shout-out to Tucson. Let's... uh. Kim and Carol, let's get some more Tucsonians, would you say? Let's get some more Tucsonians Tucsonians. watching our show. Tucsonians. Tuscanites. 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 (laughs) And we love Tucson. Love the state of Arizona. It's all good. (laughs) Who else is checking in? What state are you from? Um, Give everybody an update on San Diego this week. We had an intense thunder and rainstorm that was a lot of fun to be through. That doesn't happen too often for us. Well, in the mountains and desert. Deserts, it happens. Yeah. But on the coast and beach, never. Yeah. And we got hit hard. Right. By that pocket, which, by the way, was the reason why the L.A. Chargers-Raiders game was delayed. Right. And it was funny because somebody said, we're in a dome. Why are you delaying it? Well, in the arena, the stadium arena, it's open on the sides. Uh Uh-huh. So the roof was closed, Closed. but it was open on the sides, and that's why they delayed it. Okay. And John said he got an inch and a half of rain. And just to give... Yeah, yeah, just to give people a perspective, San Diego on average is 10 inches a year. A so, year, if we're lucky. So to get an inch and a half in a week it's 15% is, of is, the total yeah, rainfall. is absurd. Now, how does your property handle a lot of rain? Good drainage? Perfect. Or... He's on top. Yeah, yeah. drains yeah. really well. Perfect. But I'll tell you, I was like in heaven pulling weeds. It oh, was so, so much soft. fun come to right pull out. the weeds, right? Yeah, they come right out when yep. the soil is nice and damp. Y- yeah. y- you know what? Um, I know I tried your method of tipping over the uh, rose pots oh. to get the weeds out. Mm-hmm. But, but it, it, sometimes you get a weed and you pull it, but you don't get the root. But you pull enough of it where you go, oh, I got to dig down even farther to get the rest of this thing. No, I told you you had to pull the rose out of the pot. Yeah, you know what? There's it, a lot going on. Listen, if you, <laughs> listen to me, Brian. <laughs> listen to me. It's work. If you pull the rose out of the pot... Then you can grab the weed from the side and pull it all the way down. I, I but know, then you but the problem is you have to add more soil after. I was that. gonna say I was gonna say you know, you know the what problem. the problem with that is though, yeah. John, is that Brian here's would problem. need soil. Here's the problem. I don't I'm have, surprised you even have weeds with no soil. I don't have gloves. <laughs> I don't have good gloves to grab these roses. I thought Tiger was gonna get you the, some these for are your some birthday. Big thorns. Hey, my birthday's next month. All right. John's is next weekend. Is it? Next Saturday. Next Saturday. What? We have a meeting after the show. Oh, yeah. That's the right. future of our show rests in the hands of that meeting next week. <laughs> What's and going on, John's guys? This, this is a good show. We get a lot of energy today. Hey, Tanya it's says tough. that our storm made the news in San Jose. What? Yeah. Really? That's impressive. Yeah, that was, it was, it was a, heck it was of a, a storm. big storm. It was a big storm. Lots of rain, lots of thunder, lots of lightning. And see, that's the thing is for us, I remember going to Washington, D.C. as a kid. For like the Washington D.C. trip, and it just happened to be during a thunderstorm, and I was in awe. Is this like a senior trip? Yeah, because yeah, last... that's where we went on our senior trip. Did you? Yeah, it and... took a train though. Oh yeah, no, he couldn't take the train. But it's yet. intense, right? But I mean, I was in awe, and it lasted like hours, you know, of a thunderstorm. Right. Because I'm used to a thunderstorm being like two things of thunder and a little bit of lightning, and then it's over. And I was just thoroughly impressed. And they were like, oh, this is normal. This is normal for us. Right. Not a big deal. That's kind of what it reminded me of last week is it was just hours of, of yeah. thunder and lightning and then rain and wind and everything. That was 
pretty impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, we are very close to a break. Now, normally at this time, we say we're going to take a break and bring our guest on. Yeah. Our no guests, guests are week. plants today. Yeah. These are our guests in right. the studio. We're going to be They're talking about plants. from our plants. yard, right? Yes. Correct. And we're going to be talking about the plants, a little background, how they were developed, uh, why we have them, so on and so forth. So with that in mind, uh, those that tuned in on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live, we're going to take a break, our first break. But coming right back on Facebook Live a bit longer as uh, you enjoy our many sponsors on BizTalk Radio. This is Garden America. It's John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Maine. Messages on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live. We are coming right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. I say welcome back like we've been gone a week or so. We are right here. Those on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live, thank you for tuning in. I want to mention something that I keep forgetting to talk about. About a month ago, we talked about my fountain outside. Oh, yeah. And the, the algae problem. No products worked. Nothing I did could solve the problem. One of our viewers, I don't remember your name, but you mentioned hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Problem solved. Really? Unbelievable. And this is with intense sun. I added a little bit of hydrogen peroxide one, once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks. No more algae at all. And it was a huge Impressive. problem. You know, when somebody gives you advice yeah, yeah. and it works, you're like, wow. And, and there's hundreds of products out there that are like algae for fountains. Koi ponds, and fountains, and they don't work. Yeah. Because I, I tried them. Right. And bingo, gone. Boom. No, the formula for hydrogen peroxide, right? I don't. H2O2. H2O2. Yeah. It, what what doesn't it do? It's amazing. It <laughs> cleans wounds. You can drink it? You can drink it. <laughs> cleans wounds. It keeps algae out of... Out of anyway, so yeah. whoever that advice was from, thank you. And, oh, guess who it was? It was Car- Kathy. Who? Kathy. Oh. Shout out to you, Kathy. Great advice. What other advice do you Kathy have for us? Kathy from Neeland. Yes. That's um, anyway, Kathy. Unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah. you know, shelve those products. Don't buy them. Use hydrogen peroxide. Perfect. Good info. Okay, so what do you what do you guys want to start? Let's, let's start with John. Let's over here. start with that agapanthus. Okay. And Balls the reason I want to start with that is, um, I think Tiger's wondering why would you bring in an agapanthus? No, I'm sure there's got to be something special. <laughs> uh, it's a brand new agapanthus, a new patented variety. That was bred by our buddy Ping Lim. Ping did this? Oh. Ping did that. Ping, you know, probably one of the world's uh, leading rose breeders. For sure, one of the world's leading rose That's breeders. That's why I'm taking it back, John. Yeah, he's also doing Agapanthus. And this is a new one that is going to, if it's not already, it's going to start showing up at your uh, home improvement centers, Lowe's, Home Depot. And it's called Atomic Bloom. And... It's a miniature agapanthus with a large flower. Because, you know, Peter Pan's... Yeah, are, they have a very compact... Right, they're... Bloom flower. The, the common dwarf ones, but um, this one has got a pretty large flower for a little plant. And this one is not a rebloomer, but Ping does have rebloomers that are also coming out on the market. So what else does Ping do that doesn't revolve around roses? This hibiscus. is interesting. Hibiscus. Yeah. Ah, that's my man. Yeah. Hibiscus. He does some really good hibiscus. On hibiscus, he's concerned with um, the amount of bloom. So the two you have came from uh, Hidden Valley hibiscus. Yes. And they're partially bred for the size and the spectacular yeah, flower, they're, they're right? They're big, big flowers. Uh, but in the, where you would get one bloom on a plant, uh, maybe at a time or two blooms. I've got, I've had two. Ping will have on the same size plant thirty blossoms open at the same time. Wow, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's mad, isn't he? <laughs> Ping, you're he, mad, aren't you? He, uh, he's, he's doing, he's just amazing. That's yeah, he all is to it. Yeah. So yeah, so that's a dwarf flower, dwarf hibiscus with a big flower, dwarf agapanthus. Oh, agapanthus, right? Big flower. Yeah. Um, and then the coloration is pretty neat on it too, as far as you know. It's because in the agapanthus you kind of have whites, you have the darker colors, you have the purple. This one's 
a, a kind of a light purple um you know even the there's like a little bit of pinkish in the older flowers it looks it's a good coloration i like it so i want to remind people as nice. we as we talk about these uh, these flowers the various uh Things that we brought in today, uh, ask your questions, make your comments. It's all right there. No guests today because these are our guests, in-studio guests with the things that we brought from our backyard, patio, so on and so forth. And I'd say the the only problem with agapanthus is snails and slugs. Yes. Because that's pretty much, I mean, they don't get other pest problems, you know, just snails, sla- ugh, snails <laughs> and slugs. They're, they're all over our property. Yeah. So I, I think it's a great plant. I like them. You know, there's a lot of different ones that I like. Um, next up on the docket, yeah. Let me, what do you think? Which one do you want to do next, John? You know, uh, Rick was asking uh, what zone that agapanthus will grow in, mm-hmm. and I, I honestly don't know. I do know that there, this one is an evergreen agapanthus, and there are deciduous agapanthus that will grow in Idaho where Rick is. Uh, this one, I, I honestly don't. Well, know. you know what? You can also so follow. I, I don't want to say our advice, but all three of us have a tendency when we don't know if something's going to grow or somebody says it won't grow in that zone, we, we try it anyway. Yeah. You know, we'll say, yeah, I'm going to try it. I, they say it can't grow here. I'm going to try it. <laughs> what the heck, Rick? <laughs> Give it a shot. Yeah. Okay, what's up next on the docket? What do you want to do next, John? Tiger's in charge of the plants. All right, Tiger, what all do you right. think? Um, let's see. We got this one in the white pot. Ah. That, ah. that, how old would you say that plant is? I'm going to say that plant right there is 25 years old. You know what? You're exactly right. Am I? Yeah. That was a, that was a guess. You said that because you didn't think it was 25, right? No, I knew that it was old. First of all, you said, guess how old it is. Uh, I thought it's got to be old enough for, for you to bring that up. It can't be five years old. I should have said, old. how old does it look? Looks like about ten weeks, right? Yeah, it doesn't look <laughs> old at all. But but you kind of set me up with that question, right? So I get I get twenty. So exactly twenty five. Well, might be twenty four, might be twenty six. I can read your mind right, right now around too. there. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Here's what John's thinking. You know what? You how, think how those same that? things. <laughs> I do. That we we share those thought patterns. So so yeah, tell us about it. So it's a a boxwood, and it's a variety of boxwood called Kingsville Dwarf. Uh, it is on the market at specialty growers, but it's extremely hard to find because after 25 years, that's how big it is. And, <laughs> and you know, to take cuttings from it. What now? And it's been, I can't imagine it's been in the same little pot that you it, have here. I, it's, it started off in a two inch pot. Right, exactly. 15 right. years ago. It did start out in a two inch pot, and it was in the ground. Yeah, at my old house. Oh, really? So I dug it up when we moved. Did you have a whole miniature garden? I in did. Your old house. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I remember seeing. Some yeah, he of it. did. He did. It yeah. had a little train set that ran through there, and little people that would wave. And... <laughs> garden people trains were really popular for a while. I yeah. don't huge. think they're as popular anymore. Yeah, they were they? huge for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Walter Anderson's always has the one up in Poway, and that's every year at the Del Mar Fair. Their garden yeah, one revolved right. around a train. But I don't think they promote that as much as they used to, do they? I think only at the Poway one, but not yeah. not as much as they used to. Were you a train kid? Oh, I love trains. I mean, yeah, when I was a kid, at least yeah. back in the day, everyone had a train set. Yeah. Lionel. Lionel. So, there so was to, HO, and there was also uh, American Flyer, I think. So to have this little 25-year-old boxwood in your wow. train... Train set. Now, well, as long as would, we're talking would, about old plants. Well, hold on real quick. Okay. Regarding that boxwood. Now, is that something that would be used as a bonsai plant? Would a lot of people, you said specialty plant places would have that plant. Um, is that something that bonsai, you know, enthusiasts would go after? I guess they would. Uh huh. Um, definitely would be for miniature landscapes. But yeah, I could see that you could you can, bonsai that. But uh-huh. I don't know. After twenty five years, there's not much of a trunk to that, is right. there? Right. Yeah. After twenty five years, this is what and, you're going to get. And you have a fertilizer in the soil. That's the little um, balls, liquid balls. That's not Osmocote. Osmocote, is it? Yeah, Osmocote. But when you pop them, they there's a liquid in them. I thought Osmocote was solid on the inside. No. 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 They fill with water oh. when they get. Old. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Let's go to John. Let's go to Brian's. Oh, the ox tongue, a gift from John. 
one of my more unusual plants. Now, when John gave this to me, it had a bloom on it. It, it, it must have bloomed since then, right? No, it has not bloomed no? since then. I was going to ask you, oh. uh, how, how often should I expect a bloom? Every now and then. Every now and then. <laughs> so right Reliably, now, every now and then. Reliably. Um, it's very interesting. The, um, yeah, when you feel it, it's uh, it rough to the touch. I guess thus the name ox tongue. Right. And what is yeah, it? Yeah, you know when an ox licks you, how it feels rough. John, <laughs> it's been over a year since an ox has licked me. <laughs> over maybe two years. So I'll do my best to recollect. Okay. Uh, uh, what what gas, about it? Gasteria is the genus. Okay. And Gasteria and Haworthias are low light succulents. Perfect so, in my patio. Yeah. Yeah. So. Th- they actually make the best, some of the best uh, house plants for succulents. And it looks the same now as it did when John gave it to me, except there's no bloom. But the leaves are still dark green. It looks like it's grown a little. It's though. healthy. Like, it's grown a little. Yeah. Because it gets a little bit of sun. Um, I, but, but but yeah. Uh, now what is the what is the uh, the name? It, that's the common name, ox tongue. And what was the name again? The gas gas steria. Gas steria. Gas steria. G a s t e r i a. Uh, so as long as I'm spelling, uh, Carla was asking yeah, the boxwood name, right? The name of the boxwood. It's Kingsville, so uh, King, K I N G S Ville, V I L L E. You know, we, Kingsville Dwarf. We've got to take a break. We're about two minutes over for the oh. network. That's going to okay. be challenging if we decide to use this show for the network next <laughs> week. Uh, so we're going to take a break real quick and uh, be right back after this on Facebook Live and Biz Talk Radio. We are right back after that short break. Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Uh, those on Facebook Live right now, we hope you're enjoying the visuals. And uh, if you'd like to see us do more of this, uh, let us know. A comment on Facebook Live that, uh, hey, yeah, we like it when you do things that are different. You bring in visuals, different plants that we can talk about. So feel free to, to question and comment. And if you're listening on the radio, we will do our best to describe yes. the visuals. Um, but at the same time, you can always go back to our Facebook uh, page later on and rewatch the show. Sure. Um, fast forward, rewind YouTube the parts as that well. maybe you like, and I was going to say on YouTube. Yeah, Garden America you Radio go. on YouTube or Facebook. So, again, Tiger brings up a good point. Anybody watching or listening, if you missed a show, uh, go to our YouTube channel or, as Tiger mentioned, our Facebook page. Scroll up and down. And, again, you are in total control, stopping, pausing, rewinding, fast forward. Now, um, Brian, so the this was one of the plants that you felt was very unique in your garden yes. and you wanted to bring in. Um, and I know John gave it to you as a gift. And Horthias and these um, plants like this, they reproduce really close together. So if, if you're looking at this plant, it's got what we call like pups, you know, where it's just like growing and growing and growing, but they're so tight. Would you want to divide that out? Would you personally... Or are you the kind of person that's just going to let it go? Uh, you know what? I would let it go, but then if yourself or John said, hey, you could also do X, Y, Z to this, then I would do it. I would split. I there's would pro- probably like five or six plants in there. I, no, I don't know how, if I take it out of the pot, they just uh, separate it, it, easy? No, it takes some finagling sometimes. They're pretty tight, you know? Like sometimes you might have to get in there with a, a trowel or something like that and kind of pry them they, apart. They didn't ask cut. me if this was in the succulent family. Yeah, of course. <laughs> See, she's smart. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, if you want to divide it, as long as you're using surgical precision, <laughs> I don't think you'd have. Now, any if I problem. divide it, though, do I have to conquer, <laughs> or can I just divide? I'm not into conquering. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, so then, let's move on to the next plant. Speaking of division, right next to it, I'll move it into the screen. Is one of John's plants here. Okay. So there goes the ox tongue. Who is this moment of silence brought to us by? This moment of silence uh, brought to us by Geico. (laughs) Geico, if you're listening, just give us 15 minutes of your time, Geico, and we'll sell you some advertising. (laughs) Uh, All right, John, what are we looking at? Oh, it's showing up. Uh, Look at that. 
Brian knows what that is. Oh. <laughs> Closer look, it's right in front of you. What's it? What's the, it? It's missing. It's big green it missing? strappy it's, leaves. It's missing something, though, isn't it? No, I don't believe so. Anyway, it's a uh, clivia, but it's a dwarf form of clivia, mm-hmm. and it's I missing don't... the blooms. That's what it's missing. Well, it, <laughs> it doesn't bloom until usually December, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. But I'm trying to think. I for a while I was collecting clivia, and when I moved, I lost most of what I had. But I dug this one up and wanted to keep it because I really like how compact it is. Yeah. And yeah, it looks I, good. I think it's a variety called Sparrow, but I also had one called uh, Daruma, so it's one of those two. But uh, anyway, it's is I think it's just really cool because it's so dwarf compact, mm-hmm. and I find that it's doing better in a container because in the ground, like you were saying, Tiger, you get snails and slugs. Yeah, that is one plant also that's affected yes. by snails and slugs. And they get right down in there into the joints of these big strappy leaves. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they love that new growth. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it, it stops kind of growing because they're constantly being attacked by those snails and slugs. Um, now, the other thing that's um, interesting about clivia, as John mentioned, they bloom in a time of year when there's not a lot of other plants that are blooming. And Which is a good fill-in for those times of year. And they're very dramatic in coloration as far as, you know, a lot of them are orange. orange. Mine are orange Very bright orange. There's yellows, and then there's spectrums between. I even think there's kind of like almost, almost not a red, but like a red-orange, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a, they're working on pinks. Really? Yeah. A pink one? And that would be interesting. And white. There's cream yes. cream colored ones. Yeah. And one clivia that uh, Manny from Monterey Bay Nursery had promised to give me, and I never never got one, was a green flowering one. Interesting. And it was a really pretty green. Okay. You know, it's some some green so, flowers you go uh, I don't I don't so really So green get that. planet green? Or what are you thinking? Like what kind of green? Uh Kind of a lime green. Okay. A, a little, little like green. a dark lime green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it didn't match the foliage. No, not even. Not even. Really, close, because right. the the foliage on a clavia is dark green. Yeah, right. It's very yeah. Dark. No, it was lighter. It was bright. Okay. In that same kind of tubular flower. Yeah, the exact same flowers. Interesting. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. And then uh, there's a whole range now of variegated leaf. Right. Clavia. So <clears throat> they look. Um, attractive even when they're not blooming yeah they do because you know they only bloom in the winter but if you've got those variegated leaves the rest of the year it looks really nice one thing you have to watch out especially with the variegated leaves is that uh, they don't get too much sun or they'll burn yeah but even regular clivia will burn uh they're they're good shade plants again and doing well in my patio and also good for dark shade yeah and the you know i i really enjoy these plants in the landscape because um, when people are trying to get foliage sometimes, especially in shade, it can be mm-hmm. difficult and these plants can, you know, give you that strappy grassy look a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. normally like you couldn't put a grass in the shade. Usually, you know, there's very few grasses that can go in shade. You know, they need those. Those are more kind of full sun plants. We see these all over the property too. these clivias. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, agapanthus and clivia yep. are kind of around your home. Yep. But, Except for Hakenakloa, right? The Japanese forest grass. Right, right. But like, you know, the the other thing that I kind of like about it is um, it it grows in a way where it spreads out. In um, a lot of times, when plants like spread out from the roots, they get a, a middle area that kind of loses some of the plants because mm-hmm. they get so dense. And I just found like these just always stay nice and full. Like yeah. there's a couple properties in downtown San Diego we work on and they have them in the beds and every once in a while we'll go in there and divide them. But you, you know what I'm saying, John, when sometimes, you know, these plants get the dead center, right, right. the clavia don't do that. It's Somebody nice. online wants you to talk about how to divide a clavia. Dividing clavia. You get a lot of clavia oh, yeah. questions yeah. here. So, I mean, these are really easy, easy like yeah. agapanthus. I mean, if they're in the ground, you just dig up a bunch. And pull and them apart, right? Pull them apart or even just use your shovel to just 
break through and cut them yeah, into. Yeah, they're very strong. You they, have to do a lot to kill them. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you might get um, what you need is a, what would you call that, John? Not a tuber or a I think they're just fleshy roots. Fleshy roots yeah. on some of the foliage. As long as there's some fleshy roots on the you're, foliage, right. you you're can fine. replant that, and it'll grow right from that. If you if you just have the foliage, those usually won't root, um, or, or they'll be very difficult to root. But as long as there is some root matter on the part that you divide, it'll, it'll grow really easily. And as far as the time of year to do it... Um, like I say, they kind of bloom. I would in the, do it right after they're done blooming, right? So maybe like February, yeah, March. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it uh, before they bloom because you could lose. shock it and not have a bloom not get season. blooms that year. Yeah. So right after they're done blooming, and also before it's really. Or as hot. John likes to say, you'll interrupt their cycle. Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> never want to interrupt a cycle. <laughs> let me tell you. Well, hey, um, somebody wants to know what zone they're hardy in zone nine and ten. USDA zones, nine and ten. But the nice thing about clivia is they they're great container plants yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in a cold area, just bring it in in the winter. Would they be considered a subtropical or tropical? Yeah, I think they'd be uh, uh, subtropical. I'm trying to think of where they're from and the people. The person who wanted to know that was your new friend Linda. Oh. From Reading. All right. Yeah. Hey, Linda. <laughs> um, and what is uh, what is Rick's question about? Systemic pesticide? On the... I'm, I'm, I want to make sure it. what he's Well, you could use a to. systemic pesticide, but not for... Uh, we, I think we were talking about slugs snails, and snails and slugs. They right? do get mealy bugs sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so that would... You could use the systemic for mealy bug, but not for slug and snail, like you're saying. Sluggo or natural guard slug bait. Um, those are the products that we would recommend for um, the slug and snails. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else, Carol, is asking how much water. They're actually kind of drought tolerant yep. once they become established. Uh, they've got those huge fleshy roots that I think store some of the water. Yeah, they're heavy, heavy plants when you right. dig them out. Very heavy, and and that's a kind of a thing too. Is people think like, oh, like subtropical, tropical plant must require a lot of water. Well, if they're in the shade, you know that water doesn't evaporate as quickly. Number one, and then number two, like the plant is absorbing a lot of water, so it's in the plant, so they don't actually require a lot. Let's go to the break. All right. Our break on uh, BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live. Stay with us. Uh, questions, comments, encouraging you right there on Facebook Live. This is Garden America back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Back with your garden buddies on this uh, Saturday morning, maybe Saturday afternoon, or maybe you are watching or listening to this pre-recorded show as we uh, broadcast on uh, Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio, and several other means, be it digital, streaming. You can find us just about anywhere. If you are tuned in on Biz Talk Radio, news coming up top of the hour. This is the final segment. And then, uh, according to your clock, we are back at six minutes after. You know, I was looking through the dumpster behind <laughs> Albertsons last week. Oh, you're, you're doing what I do. <laughs> I found you there. You found me there? Yeah, you said you could find you just about anywhere. Yeah, I was, I was there. I was looking for plants. There you People go. People throw plants away all the time. <laughs> hey, um, uh, who is it here? Somebody was, oh, Carla was just commenting that she had some yellow ones that she wanted to divide. Remember mm -hmm. when they were, the yellow clavia was $100 a plant? Yep. When it first came out? Yeah. I, um. I visited the greenhouses up in Monterey Bay one time of uh, Joe Salamone, mm -hmm. who came, who introduced the Salamone hybrids, which were the first yellows right. to come out. And he also was uh, breeding for stripes, the first variegated. On the foliage. Right. Yeah. And he was the first one to come out with a yellow flowering variegated foliage. And at the time I was there, I saw that plant, and he was telling me that the Japanese had been there and offered him $10,000 oh, wow. for it. But he didn't keep it because he wanted to use it for breeding. But something interesting I learned at the time is clivia are very easy to start from seed. You know, after they're done flowering, if you don't cut the flower spike off, they'll usually set seeds. Yep. And on a variegated plant, the seeds are also variegated. 
And the interesting thing about that is the variegation that's on the seed is the variegation that will appear in the leaf really? when you plant it. So he you had all these pick and choose. Yeah, he had all these variegated plants and he could go through and pick out I like this one, I like this one, and that's the one I'm gonna plant. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting, yeah. And I'm trying to think that the the seed is usually a red kind of ball, right? Right. And it's almost like a rose hip, like it looks. Like it's like right. a red, almost right. like rose hip ball. Right. Except on the variegated ones, they're not red, they're striped. Like red striped, or what do you mean striped? Whatever color the the leaf is going to be. So, so like be a, green and white like stripes. Like a green and white stripe? Right. Oh, interesting. Um, there was something else I was going to mention regarding the, the clivy. I can't remember. Oh, you know, one of the things that if uh, listeners are have these plants and have had um, uh, used them before, I wonder if clivia get eaten by rabbits and deer, you know, because I don't know. I've never seen them in areas that kind of have those problems in, in the colder region. I would almost associate this plant to a hosta where they, um, they get eaten by slugs, snails, you know, rabbits and deer mm -hmm. because they're the shade loving, big leafy green plant. But, um, it's a different leaf texture than a hosta. So I, it's got a waxy kind of thicker feel. So I, I wonder if rabbits or deer would eat these, these, these leaves. So if you, if you live in an area where you have rabbits and deer and you have clivia, let me are know. They, yeah, are they eating it? Yeah, because I don't, I don't see too many pests eating it. Um, but we a question were, from Tanya. Tanya here about. Uh, go ahead. I don't have. Does it. the variegated seed apply to other plants too? Mm. No, Bowers not to vine mine. in particular. Right. What? What in particular? Bower. B o w. -E Bower vine. Bower vine. Yeah. 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 Not to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. And you know, since we're speaking of variegated plants, I'll bring in the next plant right now. Okay. By the way, I just checked online, and uh, clivia is in a list of deer-resistant plants. And I've never had rabbits bother. Yeah, I don't have deer by me, but I never had rabbits. Well, there we go. Something Tiger and I have in common. We both have this plant. Tiger's yours is in a much bigger pot. Yeah. A huge pot. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely a big pot for the plant. But I really like this pepper. and um, It's a it's, good pepper. It's a pepper that's on the market under the name Candy Cane. And then John also mentioned that when he did his research, it's also known there, there's a fish pepper that is variegated and um he's saying it's the same pepper which i believe um just being remarketed just being remarketed yeah right. like you're saying candy so, cane sounds like a better selling <laughs> than fish pepper right? old than fish pepper yeah so the pepper is a more or less kind of like a bell pepper kind of yes pepper um it's not a hot pepper or a sweet pepper but it's got the variegated foliage and then I'm going to try to – so you guys will have to talk because I'm going to try to pull off one of these peppers to show it on the camera too. You know, if you get our newsletter, there was a picture of those peppers yes. that Carla had uh, grown in her garden and put them on a plate. So there's a nice picture of that. And then Tiger's holding up the fruit right now. He's approaching He's also the covering our ring light, which gives it a nice shadowy look. But, yeah, there we go. Now, have you been eating so, yours, Brian? Yes. So we use them in salads. Sometimes we just cut them up and but just eat them as a snack. But it's not a sweet pepper. It's not sweet. It's interesting. You bite into it, and you think you're going to get that sweet taste, and it's like, no, not quite. It's, right. it's in between. But it's not like a jalapeno. Not oh, a not at all. Right. Anybody mm -hmm. could eat that. Oh, yeah. Kids could eat yeah. it. It's a great, yeah. great pepper. But ba um, Babies could eat it. The, the cool they thing could. about it is the, you know, we were talking about the clivia with the variegated seed pod and that variegation comes out but the pepper when it first starts is variegated and then it turns to a red mm -hmm. and then if you if you let it ripen completely it's pretty much all red but the cool thing to do is kind of get it to the point where it's a orangey red variegation like and i don't have any on my plant right, that yeah. are at that point but if you if you pick it too early the variegation is just yellow and green or cream and green, and if you pick it too late, it looks more or less just like a red pepper. Mm -hmm. But when you get it right at that point where you get a little bit of green, a little bit of cream, Perfect. a little bit of red, orange in there, it's a really neat-looking pepper. But the one thing I like about pepper plants as a whole, because 
I would have brought in my shishito pepper plant because that's one of my favorite plants also. It's too big. <laughs> well, it's in the ground. It's uh, in the ground. Um, but, um, you know, peppers are one of those plants that, you know, are perennials. They get mixed into the group of vegetables that are annuals. And so people think they can just pull them out every year and replant them, which you can do. But you could also leave it and turn yeah. it into like a bush if you wanted to. The reason they're treated as annuals is because they're frost tender. Yeah. So they usually freeze in most of the country. Right. Yeah. And so for us, we don't have right. that problem, which is really right. nice. Um, but I like the contrast on the plant. So the plant itself, whether it's a variegated pepper like this one or a green plant flower um, foliage pepper, but then peppers themselves, you can get yellows, you can get reds, you yes. can get oranges. Yes. And I like the way that looks on a plant. I I kind of feel like peppers are like a cool landscape plant. You know, I eyes. and I mentioned this last time too. The, the, these leaves intrigue me on this pepper plant. I likened them to almost like a ficus leaves. Um, got some white in there, green. Yep. Inter interesting leaf pattern on this uh, pepper. Hey, quickly back to the Clivia. Uh, Millie says that she has had many rabbits in her yard. And never a problem. No, no problem. Oh. Interesting. Must so, be that waxy, thicker leaf. Maybe. Yeah, so as far as we know, though, when animals are hungry, you never know what they're going to do. We've got to take a quick break for the network to stay on time. We're having so much fun. I keep running over time. Okay. So we're going to set the stage for that. When we return on BizTalk Radio, hour number two, six minutes after Facebook Live, we are coming right back. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back. If you are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, we say good afternoon. Six minutes after the hour here on Facebook Live. Time does not matter at all. We're going to keep on rolling right along. Choo, 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 out of the station. Here we you go. know, we were talking about Clivia just prior to the break, mentioning that as far as we knew, they were deer and rabbit proof. Right. Um, and uh, my, Somebody substantiated that, didn't my they? My good buddy David wants to know what type of feeding you would use on them. And they don't, because they, uh, they're not fast growers, I would stay away from any kind of uh, chemical water solubles, you know, miracle Grow type fertilizers. Mm. Or I wouldn't even use dry type chemical fertilizers. I would stick with, if you're going to use a liquid fertilizer, use something organic like kelp or fish meal uh, in a container. Uh, throw in some osmocote once a year and that's all you need to do uh, and then in the ground use something like malorganite or um, my mind just went oh biosol biosol yeah. biosol would be good or there's there's tons of organic fertilizers out there and all they need is is just a little bit and and they really don't they're yeah. not fussy yeah there's no reason to try to accelerate that growth right well you know and I just thought of it now when you mentioned it that the clivia also they they don't require a lot of fertilizer. Like even the ones that are neglected still have that kind of deep green right. leaf a mm -hmm. lot of times. Right. I don't know how they do it because a lot of times I see them and they've been neglected in poor soil, but where like a plant would look maybe a little bit anemic and yellow. No, they, they still look fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. They must, like you say, they They're just hardy. don't, just they hardy. need very little nitrogen. I'm assuming to do what they do. So whatever's in the makeup of the plant doesn't require that to keep that green look where, you know, this pepper, I mean, I know this one's variegated, so it's kind of hard, but I have another pepper plant as well. And I mean, I have to stay on top of the feeding All on the that time. because they, it, the foliage turns lime green right Right when it's uh, done with using its fertilizer. The, it just turns this lime green look and very pale. But if I keep on the fertilizing, it's got a good deep green foliage. Because you've, you've, you've made it codependent on you. <laughs> have I? Is that what it uh -huh. is? Oh, okay. Hey, I'm great. Hey, I need more. Feed yeah. me. Whoa. Hey, can't go anymore. Well, I've noticed if you do hold the peppers over from year to year, uh -huh. that coming out of winter because of the rains and stuff, that they're going to be really light green right. unless you feed them. Yeah. Carla, Our, by the way, on the peppers, uh, thanks thank you because you, yeah. you saved her from pulling out her peppers. Yeah. I mean, if you, like you say, John, if you live in an area that you don't get severe cold. And she's in hunting, Huntington Beach. Perfect. So, right. You know. Now, should I transplant my peppers into a bigger pot or I could leave them 
in that small part? What do you, what I think, do you think? Will it stunt the growth? Well, are they in the same pot Tiger gave it yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. should go to. Yeah, a I was going to say okay. this would be kind of I think like a good pepper-sized pot, meaning it could probably live its whole life in that pot right there. Um, you know, it's they don't a forever pot. Yeah, they don't forever need pot, yeah. they don't need a big root. Like like I mean, this would not be big enough for a tomato. Right, right. You know, we talk about tomatoes needing like those 15 gallon nursery containers and this is not as big as that and there's actually three pepper plants in there um but they do need something bigger than what yeah i gave it okay to yeah lenore wants to know uh what the name of that pepper was again so the the new name right. is candy cane and that's what if she goes to her mm-hmm. local garden center she looks for candy cane yeah or you can exactly. grow those from seed right yeah yes yeah, you can find seeds. Um, the old name, as um, we said, too, was also the fish pepper. Um, and I probably think you can only find those in seed if you were to buy it by that name. I imagine anything in production would probably be under the name. I think Burpee is the one who has it. Burpee Seed Company. Yeah, um, under the name Candy Cane. I can't remember, but yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's great. And if you if you like the bell pepper taste, it's a, a really good pepper. It is good. That. It's It's subtle. It's just a, it's a good compliment to a salad. So there we have it. There go the peppers. We're going to do another one now. So exciting, because I, I don't know which one we're doing. It's the anticipation. We're going to do another one now. <laughs> we'll just do the this one right in front of me now that John brought in as well. And that is a, a heliotrope, but it's a white heliotrope. And I like white heliotrope. Uh, first of all, I think that they're more, or they last longer than regular heliotrope. You know, some of the dark purple heliotropes um, last for one or two seasons, and then they kind of die out. This keeps going. It does, and and the blooms that are on there, like all year round, has that many blooms. And the nice thing, I can't smell anymore. But if you want to smell, the it smells like vanilla. Yeah. It's got a great fragrance. So, you know, a lot of people are looking for, for plants that bloom all year. Just one color, and yeah. there you go, right? This is perfect. And hardy. Full, full sun. Yeah. Very hardy plant. Now, this one looks a bit more compact than some of the other heliotropes you see. Is the growth habit, or is, did, was it pruned? Like, does this how it grows? First of all, yes, it it is more compact than other ones, but I do prune them back Okay. Uh, to keep them. Okay. You know, like that. And that's that's in a container. Right. You know, it's been in that container for, I think this is second year. Hmm. All my landscape plants right now are in containers getting ready to go into the ground. Um, and then on the heliotropes. By the way, that one came from Annie's Annuals. If you can't find it locally, uh, usually you can order that from Annie's Annuals. The, the heliotrope flower kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, a status flower, too. Um, yeah, where, it does. Where it kind of has, like, the, the same look, but then the other part of it is if you look at the flowers, you've got some that are just coming out. you got some that are kind of going. So, like John mentioned, it's almost like this endless cycle where a lot of plants will put out a bloom, and then, and then they don't look up, good for right. a while, where I see buds and dead plants flowers all on the same plant you, you couldn't tell what time of the year it was no just by looking at this plant see if you can get the vanilla smell from that let me see it yes it's, do you yes yeah absolutely did you get a tiger yes yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not you know it's funny it's not a so i think a lot of plants have like the jasmine or the rose perfume oh, kind yeah, of fragrance really this strong. is this is not like that no it's very different which is kind of neat um in if you because it's kind of hard here sometimes but like if it's out in full sun and it's kind of a big kind of plant you think you get whiffs of that in the in the landscape right or do you got to go up next to it no you've got to be pretty close to it i think okay it's not going to be like pink jasmine in the spring right walking by got it yeah heliotrope and that you can find in seed as well right no. Not this one? I don't believe you can find that in seed, right? Okay. Yeah. The annual heliotropes you can you find, can in, find seed. in seed. But this right. is different from that. Right. All right. Heliotrope. And I think the white you usually don't see in garden centers. I don't know if you guys N- carry it. but n- Not very common for right. sure. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Okay. We'll save the biggest for the last. Do we have... 
time right now, Brian. I want to make actually, sure. Actually, you know what? I'm glad that you're keeping track of me. <laughs> yes, we do have time. We've okay, got, uh, perfect. We've got about two and a half minutes, and if we have to take a break uh, to continue, we will. So we have one more, but certainly a uh, long way to go before today's show is over. A lot of show left, as, as uh, they say. The cool thing about the plant that Tiger is just putting up there is that it's 50 years old. I was going to say 48. <laughs> so I was in the ballpark. 50 years old, John. Yeah, 50 years old, and it's uh, an elm tree, Hokkaido elm from the island of Hokkaido in Japan, uh, Almus parvifolia. And you know parvifolia means small leaves, Brian. And Arvis means... From the island of? No, Almas is the <laughs> genus for elm trees. <laughs> I like to make John laugh. Uh, so what's the history? How long? you've? It's 50 years old. You've I, had it how long? I've had it for a little over 30 years. And I got it from um, Miniature Plant Kingdom when they were in business. And he had a group that he was growing for bonsai enthusiasts that were planted in the ground. And at the time, he was selling those 20-year-old ones for, I think it was $80 a piece, which was a lot of money back 50 years ago, right? Or 30 years ago. Yeah, a lot of money. Probably yeah. like $200 today. Yeah. So anyway, now it's the, it, now it's that it's 50 cool. years old. Has it grown any since you've had it? Well, yeah. When I bought it, it was in a two-inch pot. It was a small. And has it reached its pinnacle? Well, it's still growing. One thing that uh, was kind of sad about it is if you look closely, there's two stems. At mm -hmm. the base. Yes. And the shorter stem was the height of the other one. And during the winter, I had a cowrie tree in a pot, and the wind blew it over and snapped off the other branch. Oh, and it didn't look good for a while, but now that the lower one is leafed out, I, I think it looks kind of cool. I it like looks, the look. I, I think it looks. I definitely could see if that was broken initially, how it would be kind of. Oh, that doesn't. You know look what? As though, good. It, I think now it looks I, better than if it was exactly I, the same. I height. kind of agree. Yeah. I kind of agree. I kind of like that the lower yeah. branch here in the middle right. is different. And and had you not told us that story, I would have thought, no, it's just the way it grew. Yeah, yeah. the trunk, the, the the bark on it. Is so unique. And We're going to take a break again. Boy, a lot right. of editing for me this week. A lot of editing for Biz Talk <laughs> I Radio. Gave you, I even gave you a heads I, up. No, but I was so enthralled with this plant. We're going to take a break. Back after this. If you are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, thank you for uh, being right there, supporting our sponsors. Those on Facebook Live, you have the opportunity to interact with us every week. Questions, comments, and we do hope that uh, you're enjoying today's show. A little off uh, the beaten track of what we normally do. You, show and tell. You know, you know, one thing, John, when you were talking about this tree, and I was just staring at it because it's right in front of me. It looks you were looking at it long, with longing eyes. I am. I am. For those clients that come to me and they say, hey, I want a tree. But I don't want it to create a mess. I, I, I'm going to start giving him this tree. Because, I mean, it's dwarf, so obviously people would laugh at me. But the leaves, they just seem like they just They're not probably gonna go stay anywhere. on there. They're right? not going to go anywhere. <laughs> it is deciduous, like most yeah, elms. So but I'm sure it'll it doesn't lose create all a mess. its leaves in the winter. But, yeah, yeah. It, it's not going to create a mess, that's no. for sure. So in the winter time. Also, this also has being zero leaves on. right, and also being deciduous, it's going to be hardy in m many parts of the country. Yes, mm -hmm. it does look like a hardy tree. Right, it looks like a tree that's been through some stuff, you know. And by no means am I trying to say that you know it's ugly. It just is that 
it looks like one of those trees that has been a survivor. I think most people like plants that are tenacious and hardy that can take a little bit, yeah. you know, take a punch and still rebound. Yeah. Because obviously with that lower trunk, that's exactly what happened. This like, might be like, my favorite. I like how John puts his little bridge. The little bridge right there. <laughs> how, how cute. The yeah. little bridge right there. But I think this is my favorite of all the show and tells today. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, like Marguerite says that her husband surprised her with one. Oh, wow. And hers is about 20 years old. Wow. How, so. how tall is it, Marguerite? How tall is your 20-year-old one? Because this one here is three feet? feet. Three, three feet? Do you think it's three feet? Uh, there's like a foot. Yeah, like two foot maybe. Yeah, two three foot, foot if you're counting the container. Yeah, but I true. think in the ground maybe a little more yeah, than let's two Let's talk feet. about the history and the origin of the bridge, John. <laughs> that you have in there. How old is the bridge? Where did it come from? Yeah. Has it survived any accidents? Um, Has it survived? Any, who crossed it? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks good. A little, a little um, added touch, a little feature there. I think there. my wife uh, bought the bridge because uh, she had made a fairy <laughs> garden for our granddaughter. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And so there was little, little. Uh, Little bridges and things, yeah. Houses, now, after, little structures. With after today's show, here's what I'm looking forward to: a lot of little spiders and insects in my studio all week. Just things that fall such a off the cat. No, I don't know. I'm just saying, <laughs> a little spider. I'll be like on Tuesday going. Oh, yeah, we had we had plants oh, yeah. here. Yeah, you know, right. And I really thought about you because. Yeah, um, I brought it all in brought plastic. plastic and... Absolutely, I appreciate that because I know how you are. Now, yep. go I, I'm looking at John's different plants, too, and John does go kind of soil-specific in his plants. You know, when I look at the different, you know, potting soils that you have for the different plants, like the agapanthus is in a little bit more of a dense soil. and Well, Ping gave me that. Oh, so it was in so, the soil right, that Ping yeah. gave it to you in? Right. Ping yeah. and his wife came over on Sunday, last Sunday. Oh. Look at you entertaining the... Higher echelon of society. <laughs> John, John, John does hang out with people like Monty Don. He just you, you and I anything. do not. Yeah, no, we we hang out with more like Farmer John. So I know this is a little bit different than these unique plants we've been talking about here on the show today. But for those of you that are kind of interested in unique and rare plants, mid November is going to be the Rose Society auction, right, John? Save the Roses auction, Save. right? Yeah. So, but it's going to be online only this year. There's still con COVID concerns. Didn't we do it online last year? We did. And this is going to be a little bit different because we're not going to do in studio. Broadcasting, right? right? Mainly because that was the only time I've ever seen you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'd love to do it you, again. You, but. you started... With the pictures, no yeah. problem. Yeah, and and I just had to keep rolling right. through them. But I mean, it was fun. I mean, what, no, never for sure. I think that if we, I think when we we will work on it. But one of the things we'll do is maybe just less of them at the time, and we can do some online um, broadcast yeah. for the auction. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's how you have an opportunity to get some unique roses. You know, once you know, once in a lifetime roses. Um, only a few here in the United States kind of roses. Some are even a few in the world kind of roses. So um, if you're into unique or rare plants, mm -hmm. November, I think it's 13th, 14th, or 14th, 15th. Well, since it's going to be online, it's only going to be one know, day. One well, day. Yeah, so. So you can get your, your um, uh, probably in another week, all the directions will be up online. Okay. But. Uh, bidding will open up pretty soon. Yeah. Speaking of roses, John wants to know <clears throat> if we can recommend a pink climbing rose oh. for Southern California to cover a column in front of his garage. And uh, this might be a question for you, Tiger, because he's asking what you would think about Peggy Martin. That was, that was the top rose on my you know suggestion list. If you want something unique Rain, and different wind, and weather. hardy is you know Peggy Martin for sure. And we um, are going to have one in the auction. There you go. There's if, a great way to get one. If you can, uh, if you can't find it anywhere else, but yeah. if you look online, you may be able to also buy it from someone. Right. Um, but also, I mean, also climbing. Uh, Peggy Martin will get to be pretty big, so you'll need to do some clipping on it. 
That's okay. But tons of blooms. But uh, Eden, climbing Eden, E D E N. Right. I think is a beautiful pink climbing rose. Um, and that is one that they commonly do where it goes up like a stem, and then it'll come off like on an umbrella on top, mm -hmm. and it just cascades over the top. They use that one. So like you're saying, oh, yeah. they don't. It doesn't require as much maybe pruning for right. up a column as Peggy Martin would. Um, you know, that's that's a really, really neat road. One rose we haven't mentioned in a long time, and I think, you know, John, in all your endeavors with roses, you, this should be a priority on your list now that you're settled into your house, is how you can get a clipping from that, um, was it Kifskate rose? <laughs> the, the giant white rose that was as big as a house. You 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 should if try. I, to... If I gave you a Kifskate rose, would you plant it yes. in your yard? Yeah, would I would, really? for sure. I would plant it way back <laughs> there, but it would I would just let it do its thing, and uh, that would be spectacular. I thought Peggy Martin was way back there. Is there it, an even back? There is even a backer, a, okay. a farther Actually, back. Actually, Peggy Martin, Tiger's doing some experiments. Is uh, yeah. it's in the deep end of your pool right now, right? Yeah. You let it <laughs> do some experiments. See what uh, how yeah, that thing. See how go. that goes. Yeah, the chlorine didn't affect it. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. You know, tomorrow I've got uh, two people. Uh, coming over that are bringing roses for the auction oh. and one of the roses that i'm interested to see is the iron throne oh you mentioned this which before. is uh, chris greenwood's rose but the people that who are who are bringing it had meant to graft it onto a traditional rootstock but by mistake they grafted it onto peggy martin oh so I've never seen Peggy Martin used as a rootstock, so it's going to be it's really, really interesting to see yeah. what that rose does. We're going to take a break. We have two more segments coming up. Those on Biz Talk Radio, this pre-recorded broadcast, those of us on uh, Facebook Live. So do stay with us. And again, plenty of show left, plenty of uh, time for questions and comments as we continue on your weekend with Garden America. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us uh, each and every weekend or as much as possible here on Garden America. We thank you for the support here, whether it's uh, Biz Talk Radio, whether it's uh, Facebook Live, digital streaming, or even our YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. And today's been uh, fun so far. A little different twist. Show and tell. What are you yeah. eating, by the way? My pepper. Oh, oh, good for you. Yeah. Eating what you brought in. Right. But, um, you know, before the break, we were talking about the... Um, the Rose Society auction that's going to be coming up in mid-November. And, you know, we brought in these plants that kind of are fun for us, you know, from our yards and to be able to share with all of our, our listeners and viewers. And if you are listening or viewing out there, you're a member of a, you know, a society of plants, orchids, um, bonsai, and you have events or something coming Let up, know. share it with us and yes. we can get the information out there um, because, you know, I'm, I, I read that the Orchid Thief book, John, and I'm moving on to the um, the other one that you recommend. The um, the world was world, my garden. The world is my garden, and you know one of the main parts of the Orchid Thief book is the different show, the orchid shows, the orchid events that they go right. to, and and it it is its its own kind of group. It's, in a, sub, it's a subculture, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. for a specific interest, right. you know, whether right. they're orchids or bonsai or you know, other other fruit fruit trees are a common thing that are popping up mm -hmm. now where they have societies for fruit trees and different fruit. And... Did you know there was a ficus society called Friends of the Fig? Really? Yeah. Do do you do you Friends are they the here fig. are they here locally? Like it's is a that, national. It's a national? Right. And do they they're just all fig? Or are they <laughs> focus on like the, the fruit it's edible all fig one? All the time, Tiger. <laughs> right. Their president is Newton. The big fig. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I knew immediately before he got it out of his mouth. Uh, oh, our older that, listeners will yeah. know what that meant. Hey, Fig Newtons are still sold in stores. Yeah. The, yeah. Ficus figs. Okay, we got a couple of questions. Uh, John wants to know when the auction yeah. is again. Uh, again, uh, because we decided not to have an in-person auction and it's going to be online, we have to change the Stand directions. Down. But if you go to CCRS, which stands for California Rose Society, so CCRSauction.com, you can see a list of the roses that are going to be available. Uh, they're not all up there yet. Like I said, I've got about 30 to 40 more that are coming tomorrow, and then I'll put those on the list for next week. And then I think that I think that online bidding will begin the end of October and carry through to that second week in November. And as we get closer, we can talk about some of the roses on right, there and right, what sure. the bids are and all of we, that. Could we put a link in our website, temporary link, yeah. to take us there? Yeah. yeah. We'll get Daniel on that. In our big meeting next week. Oh, that's right. Big meet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. John's birthday, big meeting. Determining the future of the show. So, so you know, there be a so, future. So, you know what I should say is, Brian, what do you want to bring in for John's birthday dessert? Because it doesn't matter to John since he can't taste anything, anyways. So, we can decide. Fish peppers is what he's going to bring me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should bring in, boy, boy, what's your. Probably, um, I'm going to get a, a Pocky chip, a Carolina Reaper chip. <laughs> One of those hot chips? Yeah, the ones. And yeah, you make him eat he that? He can't taste. He Who can't. cares? He can no, I, I, suffer from oh, indigestion. Oh, you can taste that. Now, all of a sudden, we can taste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I've always been able to taste. I can't taste well. Oh. Right. Everything I taste is either no taste or bad. So do you think that, that, that your situation would be diminished in terms of hot? No, can't eat peppers. No, I can't eat peppers okay, at all. Okay, I've, I've come to the conclusion that people that can eat really hot peppers, it's it's in your DNA. You're, oh, you, no. I don't think you can develop that because either you can take hot or you can't. I used to work with a guy, I might have told you this before, who was, I guess he was like uh, six foot three, husky. <laughs> Eyes of blue. Blonde hair, blue eyed, and his wife was Mexican. And he would come mm -hmm. to work and open up his lunch, and he'd have these hot peppers in there. Uh huh. And he would start chewing on them and eating them. And I'm not exaggerating, his face was dripping in sweat. <laughs> sure, probably hiccups. And it looked painful. And he says, Oh, no, I really like this. <laughs> I, look, I love the Whoa. pain. Yeah. yeah, but I guess oh. every, you know every year this company, the Pocky Chip, comes out yeah. each year more and more, and they've got a lot of Carolina Reaper uh, powder on these things. Yeah, and it destroys people. And I'm uh, sorry, I start laughing because nobody told you that you had to eat it. Yeah, you've got yeah, your little your YouTube choice. channel going, yeah. and you want to show how much you can take. And they're trying to, you know, oh, it's not hot, it's not hot, <laughs> and then you got to eat it. Then they got to take it like a five minute. Uh, Break, break, and before you can have milk or ice cream or water. Um, it's so funny because just yesterday, a while back, Tasia was walking through the nursery and she saw a pepper and she goes, "It didn't look like a hot pepper," so she just <laughs> took it and she took a bite, and it was a really hot pepper. I don't remember which one it was, but it was a hot pepper. And so just, just off one of your plants at the nursery, yes, at the nursery. Okay, okay. And so just yesterday, she, she kind of know better. She brought it up again, and she goes. Hey, Dad, so in the future, when I'm going through the nursery, I'm not going to just pull a pepper off and eat it. I'm like, probably a pretty good idea. Like, <laughs> and you know what? That, you know, that's a good life lesson yeah. about a lot of things. Yeah, right? You know. So did it destroy her? Was she really like, uh, it was? It wasn't terrible, but she definitely regretted it. Yeah. I, I remember I, about 30 years ago visiting a nursery that was growing really hot peppers, and the guy warned us. Don't even touch those because they're so hot. If you touch your eyes, it mm -hmm. could blind yeah, yourself. Yeah, they tell you to wear gloves with yeah. some of these chip challenges. So, of course, the first thing I had to do was pull one off and taste it, right? And all I did was uh, put it to the tip of my tongue. Wow. And I had a numb spot for two weeks on my tongue. What kind of pepper was it? Do you recall? It, I, it because was 30 years you, ago. I don't know. It certainly was before California Reaper, so they, they've bred it wasn't a lot. that hot. Hotter peppers since then. Yeah, it's right. almost like they just get every year more and more and more. How much can you take? Yeah. No, not hey, me. 
Lila wants to know where the itinerary for our European trip is. Mm. So um, let me tell our listeners, first of all, the itinerary is done. Matthew has taken his first trip since COVID started to Europe right now. Yeah, testing the water. He's in Europe right now, and he's making, you know, trying to see what things will be like for next spring. So I do have the itinerary. It's not quite posted online, but if you send me an email to john at gardenamerica.com, I will forward you a copy of the itinerary. We're going to try to make this work. There's no guarantees. Well, there is a guarantee because well, we... Matthew gives yes. uh, is going to make it a hundred percent guarantee, money back guarantee. Yeah, there's no guarantee we're going to go. Right, but if we don't, but if go, something does happen, you get your money you, back. You get all your money back. Yes, uh, he said uh, as long as you opt out before February fifteenth, and he said if it's a little unsure that maybe he'll even extend the date. So what we're planning on doing, uh, because it looks like it would be the safest place for us to go. We're going to go, go to the Floriade in Holland. And the Floriade is held once every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's an international garden show where countries from all over the world set up exhibits. So that'll be fun. And we're going to go during Tulip Festival time. So we'll be able to see both. And, um, Brian, I know you'll be interested. We're going to have uh, beer and cheese tasting. <laughs> Yeah. And also going to Belgium. So we'll do Holland and Belgium. Uh, and it's uh, it's nine days. So a little bit longer than some of our trips. Yeah, but well, we've had nine, ten day trips we have. before. Yeah. So again, that's the story. And John, you're going to have the itinerary. I do uh, have it. So it's just not posted on the Earthbound Expedition site yet. But just send me a note to John at com, and I'll just well, forward Well, something else we can post on our website too, Tiger. Yeah. For the meeting next week. Bring notes. Make notes. Bring make notes. notes. Bring notes. Right. So we're kind of looking forward to that. If, yeah. If, make, if, if we can make it work. If you get the newsletter, the picture of Tiger today, I think, was taken in England, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. With his big oversized sunglasses. Yeah. That was the only <laughs> oversized way. Oversized head. I remember those sunglasses because as I went into my room, I think I told you I found a pair of sunglasses someone had left in there. Yeah. And, and it turned out they were yours. Oh, okay. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. I remember every detail <laughs> yeah. about every trip I've ever taken, <laughs> except for some of the people that have gone. <laughs> you know, I told you that that on our TV set in the living room, where our our uh, screensaver is all these pictures from Europe and various places, and it's interesting when they pop up. We go, oh, I remember that day. Picture of of Shannon and Dana sitting next to a fountain, or just it reminds you of things we did that day. We yeah. went and saw the gladiators. Did you go with us that day? We saw these uh, gladiator demonstrations. Um, Are you talking about in the Colosseum? No, the Roman no, no. This was a small, what was that little small French town we were in? Oh, my good. Just, it was a, uh, off the beaten track. I don't Aros? know. Aros? Uh, uh, no, what was the name of it? Anyway, used to be dominated by the Romans, and there's an arena that's still there. They had uh, yeah, that little oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Show. Okay, we've got to take a quick break. Coming back after this on Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Okay, we are right back, and this is our final segment. doesn't matter if you're tuned in to Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. It's the final segment. That's it. After this, we're finny. Until next finny. week. Until next fin week. Isn't finny. that French? Finny? Done. Finny, done, completed. Complete. So thank you for tuning in. Still got yeah. some show left, and still time for questions, comments. Hey, Kim talked about uh, their Tucson Backyard Garden Club doing a Zoom event. Ooh. From, from uh, Horn Canna Farm. Now we Ooh, had uh, we had horn on. Yeah, before. we did have them on. Nikki Snow is going to be talking about cannas and answering questions. Awesome, yeah. cannas. Cannas are a fun plant too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing about cannas is you don't have to be patient. <laughs> you know, because they grow fast. So quick. The the I'm one like impatience. That was good. The <laughs> one that really um, always fascinated me was the King Humberts. Uh huh. 
because they get to be like eight feet tall. Yeah, like corn stalks. Yeah, yeah. really. I'm I'm fascinated by things that are very large and very small. In between, <laughs> I don't really care much. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Uh. But I always like dwarf plants, little tiny plants. And then there's a there's a book I have in my library called Giant Vegetables. And the, I think there's even a website we've we've mentioned before where you can get seeds for giant oh, vegetables. Yeah. yeah, well, we had, you know, and it's it, this time of year is the big pumpkin. I think the world record was just re uh, broken again, broken again this year with the pumpkin, um, you know, where they're producing these massive pumpkins and squash and, uh, you know, different other things. That's a whole, you know, we had uh, I can't remember who it was on before, but we he was a record somebody holder. talking about that. And, you yeah. know, I mean, there's they have. Oh, there was a guy from back east. Right? Yeah. They had, you know, giant cabbage heads and, right. you know, just everything <laughs> giant vegetable wise. I think Feel if like I was a holding movie. a pumpkin contest, one of the categories would be the biggest round pumpkin. Yeah, because not have it be flat. Uh, flat, right? Or the Cinderella. I guess it's look. nice to have it flat on one side so it doesn't roll anywhere. <laughs> when they're that big, you don't want to yeah. get in their you know, way. Yeah. Well, I yeah. wonder what is the biggest pumpkin that's been carved. It's one thing to grow it. What's the biggest gourd pumpkin? Well, why couldn't you carve? The biggest one. The I just. Biggest the, one. I mean, I'm wondering what is the biggest one that anyone's carved. Obviously, yeah. you could do it. <laughs> I'm not sure where it. you're going with that. Okay, you've got a huge, Pumpkin. breaking records. Yeah, all yeah. that. And right now, you yeah. want to carve it. Now, I want, I want to know. You could. I mean, talk about being able to really create something. You could probably carve a mouth big enough to walk in. Yeah, and you could maybe even have like multiple scenes going on on one pumpkin and instead of like little candles with the eyes you could have torches it's that big <laughs> you could live in there you could sell it to peter now Piper, you're getting right? the idea yes yeah. that's what i'm talking about although once you once you break that pumpkin it's it's not going to be livable for very long yeah. i don't know he kept his wife in there very well as i recall <laughs> he did yeah <laughs> because cause he couldn't keep her right uh, uh, not until he put her in the pumpkin mm -hmm. And he kept her very well, from what I understand. He was a pumpkin eater. <laughs> you guys go off. Kathy uh, in Neelan mentions that she saw a picture of the square watermelons in Japan, which we... Yeah. Oh, how did I, your... I oh, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't get on? one. I couldn't get one. Next year will be better. I couldn't get one this year. You know what's funny? But I, I thought I, you you did your I bought the, cucumbers. Yeah, I know. I, I couldn't get it to work. Okay, uh, Tiger's I got, like me. I got, what, yeah. what, what is that... How is Tiger like me in that aspect? Yeah, I'm going to make it happen. Don't if I worry. don't say something, if I don't bring up like something died or didn't work, I just oh, don't yeah. talk about it <laughs> until I'm forced to, until yeah. it's brought up. You see how quickly he dismissed it? Yeah. No, I didn't. You know what? It just did. I next yeah. year, it just. I, right. I made some. I made some very poor. That's okay. Decisions on the placement and when to put it in. You and, can't be afraid to fail. It's no. okay. I love it. Who cares? Yeah. But when it came time to growing loofah sponges, oh boy, gosh, he, I couldn't. He was, yeah, he couldn't pictures sell them fast couldn't. brought him yeah. in here, and <laughs> that was like a weed. You only did those. Did you do those again? Did they come up from seed anywhere? No, they did. They did come up from seed, but not this year. Hmm. So I don't know what happened this year because those reseeded everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I used um, it in the shower, and and it's starting to grow up from the drain now. I've got lupus coming <laughs> got up. Lupus growing out of your drain. So I dropped it in the shower. I wasn't very smart. Well, you're supposed to take the seeds out yeah. first. Well, yeah, I know that now. <laughs> now you tell. Sure. Me. You know. Uh, I think we're all caught. Keith says, good program today. Thank you. You know, we were talking about Clivia, and your Clivia that are at your house came from Keith, right? They came from Keith. Keith are doing very well. Yeah. And uh, the Plumeria, Keith, is huge. It just hasn't bloomed. Yeah, that was Not one plant light. I was going to bring in, too, was one of my Plumerias. But they're in big, heavy pots. Yeah, this one so is, okay. too. I well, could... you know, I, I thought you were going to bring in a bunch of flowers. I can bring in a bunch of flowers next week. Yeah, why sure. didn't? Yeah, that would be, I have a ton of flowers. Yeah, bring I'll bring in. in a bunch of flowers next week. Uh, you know, one of my plumeria I just saw yesterday as I was looking at it has mealybug. Really? Yeah, it's hmm. like I thought. Hmm. It's not too common. No, I thought, yeah. you know, I'm I'm upset, the, really. Does it have it right on, is it the mealybug on the leaf on or the is leaves. it on the stem? On the leaves. Oh, okay. That's not as bad as on the stem. They I came think. from... Um, 
I, I'm not sure if the heat had anything to do with it because prior to the rain, we had in Fallbrook five days in a row of near 100-degree temperatures yeah, with yeah. blowing winds. It was, it was terrible. Yeah. The plants were so happy when the rain started. Yeah. And now we have a whole week coming up of cooler temperatures, cool right? Cool weather, yeah. So we my, might be into our winter temperatures. I hope so. My I really no famous do. famous last words. Thanks, John, setting that up. Um, but, um, yeah, I have my irrigation off now. So. Yeah, I learned something goes. this week that I knew. Uh, and <laughs> I learned one, something one, this le- week. Just less than a minute, so you know. Less than a okay, minute. Okay, well, I have a sport. I think of a rose called Lady Mary Fitzwilliam, and the sport is called White Mary, I think. But anyway, Lady Mary Fitzwilliam uh, has descendants. You know, it was used in breeding, Mm -hmm. and so any rose that comes from it's called a descendant. Do you know how many roses came from Lady Mary Fitzwilliam? 1,500. 18,000. Whoa. Over 18,000. So almost any rose you buy today is a descendant. Le- yeah, Lady Mary Fitzwilliam in the background. And with that, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. Biz Talk Radio, we do appreciate you listening to these pre recorded shows. Catch us live on Facebook every week, 8 o'clock in the uh, West Coast, 11 o'clock Eastern Time Zone. So for the entire crew, John Begnasker, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Thank you for watching and listening to us here on Garden America. Have a great week, a good weekend. We'll do it again next week right here on the Garden America Radio Network. To all of you, Garden America Nation, we say goodbye.